When I took a picture of Capricornus for my last video, a couple of nearby stars caught my attention, and I recognized them as being part of Aquarius, which was surprising because at the time, I didn't realize how close together Capricornus and Aquarius are. I was able to get a picture of both constellations on the same night, so that was nice. Let's draw upon the constellation Aquarius to learn more about the night sky. These are the five stars that caught my attention. Their magnitude is in the range of three and four, so they're just below the average star brightness. That being said, they're among Aquarius's brightest stars and are all part of the official Aquarius star pattern according to the International Astronomical Union. When you're looking for it, these will be the ones that are easiest to spot. You can find Aquarius between July and December, with late October being the best time to see it. In October, it culminates between 9 and 11 p.m., so that's when it will be highest in the sky. As I've already alluded to, a good way to help you find it is to first look for Capricornus, its zodiacal neighbor. Unlike the other zodiacs, which mostly follow each other with a fair amount of breathing room between them, Aquarius and Capricornus look like they overlap a little bit. These two stars in particular are right above Capricornus. Aquarius is commonly called the water bearer, and in fact, the word is Latin for water carrier. To the ancient Babylons, it represented the god Enki, lord of the earth and god of water and knowledge. This actually confused me a little bit because I read the same thing about Capricornus for my last video. However, Wikipedia makes the minor distinction that the seagoat is the symbol for Enki, while Aquarius is a more proper representation or image of Enki. So go figure. Anyway, in Greek tradition, there are various stories for this constellation. One has to do with Deucalion, who built a ship to survive a flood before washing ashore on a mountain, not too unlike the biblical story of Noah. Another story identifies Aquarius as Ganymede, the young son of Trojan who was taken to Mount Olympus to serve as cup carrier to the gods. Beta Aquarii is the brightest star in Aquarius, with an apparent magnitude of 2.87. Its Arabic name is Sadlsud, meaning luck of lux. It is about 540 light years away. Alpha Aquarii is the second brightest star in Aquarius. Its Arabic name is Sadl Milik, meaning luck of the king. It is about 520 light years away. Some deep sky objects include two globular clusters, Messier 2 and Messier 72. Globular clusters are very old and tight groupings of stars with numbers up to millions of stars. Open star clusters, on the other hand, are smaller and looser groupings containing only a few hundred stars. Another object in Aquarius, called Messier 73, was once thought to be a sparsely populated open cluster, but it is now thought to be a chance alignment of stars that are not so near to each other. Subsequently, it is identified as an asterism, which are recognizable groupings of stars regardless of how close together they are. Next, we have a couple of planetary nebulae, which are glowing shells of ionized gas ejected from red giant stars late in their lives. So basically, you can think of planetary nebula as dying stars, but there are actually different kinds of nebula, which I won't get into the difference here. Anyway, there are two popular nebulae in Aquarius, including the Saturn Nebula and the Helix Nebula. They are more or less in the areas shown here. Both are quote-unquote planetary nebula. Both nebulae have an apparent magnitude of about 8, so you should be able to see them with an amateur telescope. Just don't expect to see those bright colors without a long exposure photograph. Either way, they should be fun to look for if you get the chance. That's all for now. There's my drawing of Aquarius, the water bearer. I hope you like it, and I hope you can make some time to get outside and look up. Keep learning, and remember to smile.